Section 26 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Tuesday, 13. I had a comfortable season in the church on the words of St. Paul to the Galatians. Am I, therefore, become your enemy, because I tell you the truth? In this discourse I observed how great was the affection between the Christian societies in ancient Galatia and St. Paul, until the Judaizing teachers came in among them. The province of Galatia was in Lesser Asia, and when the ancient Gauls, or Galatae, wanted to extend their province, they penetrated through Italy and Greece, and went into Asia, and pillaged the country as far south as Babylon. But one hundred and twenty thousand, being defeated by a handful of Jews, and Attalus, king of Pergamus, having forced them from his territory, they settled here. Among these the gospel was planted by St. Paul, Acts 16.6, who had but just left the country when the schism began by means of the teachers of the ceremonial law. In this church there have been a great number of bishops, and some councils and synods, but for near eight hundred years the tyranny of the Mohammedans, Saracens, and Turks hath almost exterminated the very name of Christianity. I observed, one, that there is a proper portion of truth which is applicable to every one's case. 2. That it is a bad sign when a man is esteemed an enemy for telling the truth, as if falsehood alone were pleasing. Wednesday 14. I preached at Brother Wells's on, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. This cannot be the language of any but gracious souls. Sinners think all these things are against them, and wonder what they have done more than others, that they are thus afflicted. I treated of afflictions of body and mind, personal and family, in the church and in the state. Ah, my Lord, by whom shall Jacob arise, for he is very small. Sunday 18 I preached in the morning on Exodus 20, the first and second commandments in the afternoon on the affliction and conversion of Manasseh, Second Chronicles 33, 12, 13. One young man behaved amiss, for which I reproved him. Perhaps he might be among those in the evening who made a riot, broke the windows, and beat open the doors. Tuesday 20. I read Mr. Flavel on Keeping the Heart, where I found some weighty sayings. I preached in the evening, and Brother Bruce exhorted. Mr. Blank came home with me, pleading and crying to God, and acknowledging his sin. Who knoweth but he will turn, repent, and find mercy? The desperate wickedness of this people grieves and distresses my soul, so that I am almost in continual heaviness. Yet through grace I trust I am kept from sin. I spent part of this week in writing and reviewing some explanatory notes on our form of discipline. Sunday 25 I preached morning and afternoon. My soul at seasons wadeth through deep waters for this city and society. It cannot, in my opinion, continue long in its present situation. Perhaps a dispensation of mercy or judgment is near. Wednesday 28 I finished reading the history of the French Revolution, containing about 800 pages, and a surprising history it is. They have had heavy struggles with monarchy, aristocracy, and democracy, and have had martyrs of each and every form. Thursday 29 I am sensible of not being enough in prayer. This gives me pain. There came on a violent, awful storm of rain. And what should I do upon the road in such weather? Charleston is, to me, one of the most serious places I ever was in. Saturday 31 I was in a most distressed, gloomy state of body and mind. I employed myself in reading, writing, and prayer, but very uncomfortably. Sunday, February 1 Still heavy is my heart, still sink my spirits down. I went to the church and lectured on the second table of the law, attending particularly to our Lord's comment on each precept. 
In the afternoon I enlarged on Jeremiah 31, 33, and I do hope there was some stir in the hearts of the people. I had an afflictive night by the labors of the day. I began reading Berridge's Christian World Unmasked. How like the man and his conversation, which I heard by the hour thirty years ago. I think there is some tartness in his Christian remarks on the checks, and dear Mr. Fletcher, of whom I have heard Mr. Berridge speak in terms of very great respect. I was insulted on the pavement with some as horrible sayings as could come out of a creature's mouth on this side of hell. When I pray in my room with a few poor old women, those who walk the streets will shout at me. The unparalleled wickedness of the people of this place, and the spirit of contention among the professors of religion, most severely agitate my mind. I now spend my time in running hastily through the first volume of the Hebrew Bible. Thursday 5. I was deeply dejected. I have been lately more subject to melancholy than for many years past. And how can I help it? The white and worldly people are intolerably ignorant of God. Playing, dancing, swearing, racing, these are their common practices and pursuits. Our few male members do not attend preaching and I fear there is hardly one who walks with God. The women and Africans attend our meetings, and some few strangers also. Perhaps it may be necessary for me to know how wicked the world is, in order that I may do more as a president minister. There is some similarity between my stay here and at Bath in Virginia. Oh, how I should prize a quiet retreat in the woods! In Mr. Wesley's journal, Volume 1, Page 154, I find he observes, I set myself carefully to read N. Machiavel's celebrated book. I began, says Mr. W., with a prejudice in his favor, having been often informed he had been misunderstood and greatly misrepresented. I weighed the sentiments it contained, compared one passage with another, and endeavored to form a cool, impartial judgment. And my most deliberate judgment is, that if all the other doctrines of devils which have been committed to writing since letters were in the world were collected together in one volume, it would fall short of this. And should a prince form himself by this book, so openly recommending hypocrisy, treachery, lying, robbery, oppression, adultery, and murder of all kinds, Domitian or Nero would be angels of light compared to that man. No wonder that Dr. Blank should say that the Methodist preachers were men of true Machiavellian principles. Judge Reader This is the justice. This is the mercy. We are to expect from some priests. And why? Because we spoil their reading trade. Sunday 8 I preached on Psalm 8, 4. Brother Bruce entertained us on that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I met the society, read the rules of discipline, and gave a close talk about conformity to the world. I have now finished the first volume of Mr. Wesley's journal. I admire his candor and the soundness of his sentiments, but I need say but little, as it will be shortly published and speak for itself. Monday 9. The people have high work below stairs laid off for each day this week. The Western Regiment parades today the Eastern tomorrow. Wednesday is the President's birthday. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday come on the races. I intend to keep close to my room, except when attending meetings in the evenings. I am in the furnace. May I come out purified like gold. It is a dark providence holds me here. Mr. Phillips is here and in want of money. Our friends opened their hearts and gave him a twenty or thirty dollars. He is not clear on original sin, so that we cannot and dare not employ him. Yet, notwithstanding his sentiments, I hope he is a good man. But, good or bad, he ought not to starve. Monday 16 I rode out to take the air, and saw the wandering air balloon. I am persuaded there are gracious souls among Mr. Hammett's people, some of whom have left him, and will perhaps return. I was employed in reading Mr. Wesley's journal, and I am now convinced of the great difficulty of journalizing. 
Mr. Wesley was, doubtless, a man of very general knowledge, learning, and reading, to which we may add a lively wit and humor. Yet I think I see too much credulity, long, flat narrations, and coarse letters taken from others in his journal. But when I come to his own thoughts, they are lively, sentimental, interesting, and instructing. The journal of a minister of the gospel should be theological, only it will be well to wink at many things we see and hear, since men's feelings grow more and more refined. Sunday 22 I had no small inflammation in my ear, yet after I got to preaching I was long and loud, warm and very pointed. Our congregations are uncommonly large. I was recollecting, by the help of Mr. Wesley's journal, how long it had been since I became acquainted with the Methodists. I was awakened, as I think, when about thirteen years six months old. At the age of sixteen I began to read and pray in the public congregation. One year, six months after this, publicly to exhort and expound God's holy word. At twenty-one I traveled much, and in the beginning of my twenty-second year I traveled altogether. I was nine months in Staffordshire and other adjoining shires, two years in Bedfordshire circuit and two in Salisbury circuit. Mr. Wesley, in his journal, seems to think that the cause of the hindrance of the work of God is wholly and entirely in man. But may we not ask, with reverence, hath not God sometimes, for his own purposes, withheld his power, that no flesh might glory in his sight, but feel that he is all in all? Wednesday, 25. We had a love feast for the Africans, and many gave in their experiences with life. In the evening we had a love feast for the whites. I have had a long stay here, and now rejoice in the hope of going again into the field to work. Nothing would have kept me here but the hope of preserving my health the other ten months of the year, which will enable me to run through North and South Carolina, the New Territory, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Province of Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and sometimes Kentucky. Friday 27 we observed as a general fast. I was weak in body and afflicted with the headache. Yet I met the people in the church and read Joel 2, 12 through 18. I prayed, I wept before the Lord. I fasted from two o'clock on Thursday until half-past five on Friday. I wish we could have solemn monthly fasts and love feasts before sacrament. I hope the Lord will look upon us generally throughout the continent and take away our reproach. Mr. Wesley lived to see two general revivals of religion, one at the beginning, the other about thirty-six years ago, though doubtless they had generally a gradual growth of religion. We also have had two revivals, one at the beginning, the other about seven years ago. The third revival has now taken place in England, and I hope ours will soon follow. Saturday 28 I attended the meeting of the stewards, and directed that each of the three stewards in rotation should receive and pay all monies for one-third of the year, and then give place to another for the same time. I also appointed a clerk to attend particularly to the books. Sunday, March 1 I preached in the forenoon and afternoon, and it was thought the arrows of the Almighty flew abroad. We had a melting sacrament with white and colored people. About half a dozen of Mr. Hammett's people from Trinity attended. The people have had much dust cast in their eyes in this place, but now they begin to see more clearly. I am now about packing up in order to take my leave of this city. I am sure faithful preaching will be blessed. I have effectually worn myself out, and I feared we should not have strength to ride over the barren sands. We accordingly set out, and rode twenty-two miles to G's, tried it since I have been here. My parting subject was 1 Corinthians 16, 23-24. The congregation was very large and if the people are prudent, and the preachers faithful, 
we shall have a work in this place. The poor Africans brought their blessings, and wishes, and prayers. Dear souls, may the Lord provide them pastors after his own heart. Thursday 5 I left this seat of wickedness, not without both grief and joy. I never saw so great a prospect here, and doubt if there hath been such a one since the place was first settled. We crossed Ashley River about ten miles from town. Here was a bridge of value, which was so damaged by the worms and barnacles that it stood only two years. Sister G, her family, and a wagon were on it when it gave way. It sunk with them into the water, but they received no injury. We rode thirty-five miles, eating some biscuit with a little wine and water, and came to Mr. Eccles's Beach Hill, near Edisto River. I was somewhat wearied, but happy in my solitary retreat. I think I have not spent my time in vain in Charleston. First, I have had near as many hearers as I could have found in the country. Secondly, there hath been real fruit among the white and colored people, and such as may, with care, be preserved. I gave them a sermon at Squire Eccles's near two hours long. My soul has peace, and by the help of God I must hasten eastward and heavenward. Saturday 7 We came to Lindsay's, and after preaching to about sixty people, had to ride twelve miles to Cattle Creek after four o'clock nor was that the worst. A storm of thunder and rain came on, and had we not stopped, we should have been steeped from head to foot. Sunday 8 We had about four hundred people at the church, among whom were a few that loved and feared God, and many that are stupid, and have become hardened under the preaching of the gospel. I spent Monday 9 at Brother M's, and felt the society in the city near my heart. Wednesday 11. We rode to S's, where I gave them a long talk on the grace of God that bringeth salvation, etc. I thought the weather was too fine to continue so long, so we made a push and rode eighteen miles to Peas at the Ponds, where we supped and breakfasted at our own expense, and brought provision for our horses. About midnight the rain began to patter on the long shingles. What could we do? If we stayed, our provision would be where we stopped to eat and feed, and then rode eighteen miles more to the widow Pope's on Little Saluda. Saturday 14. I came to A's Chapel, but the weather was so exceedingly cold, and the house so open, that we went to the dwelling house, where I preached and prayed, and, the people said, stormed and scolded. When meeting was over, I saw the new still house, which, as George Fox said, struck at my life, and we found it necessary to deal plainly with Brother Blank about his distillery, and to tell him what we apprehended would be the consequence if persisted in. Its natural tendency would be to corrupt his family, and the neighborhood, and to destroy the society. Oh, that the snare of Satan may be forever broken! We came to G's meeting house, where we had as wild and disorderly a congregation as could well be without words and blows. I preached a little and stormed a great deal, but all would not do. It was an awful day to me, but I hope my labor was not wholly in vain. I lodged at D. Erpses, who came from Berkeley to Saluda, and has been a preacher twenty years. I ordained him deacon and joined his daughter to a husband. Thence I came to Jay's, where was another wedding. I had work enough, the bishop, the wedding. I could hardly keep them serious. I preached on Isaiah 35, 3-7, and had an open time. Wednesday 18. I rode to ours and preached. Thursday 19, and the two following days, we had work enough to write subscription papers to be sent abroad for the purpose of collecting one hundred pounds to finish Bethel School, and secure the land. But my expectations are small. The people have so little sense of God and religion. Saturday I opened the new house on 1 Thessalonians 5, 14, and on Sunday we had a sermon and love feast.
Tuesday, 24. Crossed Ennery at Anderson's Ford in a canoe, and Tiger at Crenshaw's Ford, and came to Brother G's, near the Fish Dam Ford, on Broad River. What a confluence of waters flows into the Santee in about two hundred miles, on a straight line, from the mouth, and in its meanders three hundred or more. Wednesday, 25. I preached and administered the sacrament at a store near the Fish Dam Ford. This part of the country hath been settled about forty years. Thursday, 26. I found some assistance on Jeremiah 31, 34, 35, at Gregory's Meeting House, in the woods, and I hope it was not altogether in vain. Last night I spent an hour with the blacks in their quarters, and it was well received by them. It will never do to meet them with the whites. By this means our preachers lose all their fruit. Many reasons might be assigned for this. O oh, my soul, rest in the Lord from moment to moment. All the places I have visited this week are new, and I hope the Lord will work at some or all of them. I exhorted our people to teach their slaves to read. This is greatly wanting. They would then understand preaching much better. We crossed Pacolet and came to Pease. My mind was under deep exercises on account of the state of religion in this neighborhood. Sunday 29. Was an awful day, perhaps the most awful I shall ever spend in this place. My comfort was in the woods with the Lord. Monday 30. I rode forty miles to M's. My body is weak, and so is my faith for this part of the vineyard. God is my portion, saith my soul. This country improves in cultivation, wickedness, mills, and stills. A prophet of strong drink would be acceptable to many of these people. I believe that the Methodist preachers keep clear, both by precept and example. Would to God the members did so too. Lord, have pity on weeping, bleeding Zion. Wednesday, April 1. We rode thirty miles through a barren country, and came, weak and hungry, to Brother B's clean, comfortable house, and had all things agreeable. I find it hard to ride eight or nine hours without any other nourishment but a little bread and tea. Friday 3. Was a rainy day. I had some talk with a few blacks, and was comfortable and happy. We lose much by not meeting these people alone. I find, generally, that those who are held by professors of religion are hard to move. North Carolina, Saturday and Sunday, 4-5. Quarterly meeting at Daniel Asbury's Meeting House. I notice many attend preaching at such times as these, who appear wild, and do not know how to behave themselves. In the afternoon I met the poor blacks by themselves, and was greatly blessed. Monday 6. We crossed Catawbaw, rode thirty-five miles, and came to Brother Fitzhugh's, where we met with kind treatment to sweeten the bitter cup of a hard and hungry day's ride. Thursday 9. Crossed Hunting Creek, and came to A's Meeting House in Surrey County. Here I had near three hundred hearers, to whom I preached on Hebrews 5, 12 through 14 and had more enlarged views of this subject than I ever had before. We have had a good work here. Fifty souls are lately brought in. Appearances are greatly changed for the better since I was here eleven months ago. Friday 10. We came to G's in Wilkes County. I feel awful. I fear lest darkness should be felt here. Ah, Lord, help me to go through good and evil report. Prosperity and adversity, storms and calms, kindness and unkindness, friends and enemies, life and death, in the spirit and practice of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sunday 12. I preach the funeral of Grandmother G., aged 87 or 88 years. Monday 13. We took our acceptable departure. 
I cannot live where God is not acknowledged. I pass through the heart of Wilkes County. Here is a poor prospect of religion among all sects. We came in the evening to the house of a poor, honest man. Bless God, we can embrace the poor cabins and find shelter. The people are kind and free with what they have. Wednesday 15 I preached on Hebrews 4, 1, to many people, collected from various parts, at Brother White's, on John's River, and was greatly assisted. Thursday 16 We had preaching, and were engaged in writing letters and copying the minutes. My soul enjoys sweet peace, but I see an awful danger of losing that simple walking and living in the enjoyment of God. End of section 26 Recording by Brian Keenan